one. Here we go, guys. We're back at you, motherfuckers, once again. <laughs> we're back again. With another podcast here for you guys. And tonight, we're going to change things around. I think this time around, we're going to start off with some wrestling talk here. Um, yeah, you know, I, we've, been, we've been talking, you know, comedies, movies, and stuff, but... Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Yeah, because kind of in the mood tonight, and watching a lot of small school wrestling, and I think it's been... I think we get into a little bit of rust. Don't you think so, bro? I think it's uh, definitely time to do some wrestling talk here. Um, so I guess we could start off by talking about like what are some of your favorite years in wrestling? I would have to say, as far as my favorite years in wrestling, nineteen ninety one and to nineteen ninety two. Ninety one and ninety two. Now, what was the yeah. roster like back then? That, that, dude, the WWF roster in 91-92 was stacked. You, you, you basically had everybody. Right. There. You, I mean, you, you had Hogan, you had Savage, <clears throat> you had Flair, you had The Undertaker, you had Bret Hart, you had the British Bulldog, you had, you had a lot of the fucking badass heels, like, you know, you had fucking Earthquake, Nasty Boys, the Natural Disasters, Yep. Um, I mean, just just the fucking talent rock roster in ninety one to ninety two. It was like wow, I'm, you know, that's the years I loved wrestling. Truly. Yeah, I mean, hell yeah, dude. You know, and then and it's like you compare that to wrestling today. It's like. There is no fucking comparison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today, I don't even watch the shit that goes on today. Um, obviously, because I, 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 I don't even keep... I don't even keep up with really anything unless I see a clip or something pop up on YouTube. Right. I don't even know who half the fucking roster is in the WWE today because I just literally don't keep up with it. Maybe snippets of things here and there, or stuff that I may hear on other YouTube channels. But for the most part, I just like when it comes to wrestling, I watch the older stuff. You know, I pop in a DVD, exactly. watch I, I'm the older the, shit. Yeah, you know, I'm the same way. I I I rather go back and watch like you know late eighties, early to mid nineties wrestling, like. Back, you know, those were my years. Right. Know, I mean, even early 2000s were some good years, you know, with Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. You oh, know, yeah. You know, but when they passed, man, that was pretty much, you know, I think the end, the beginning of the end of wrestling, it just, like, wasn't the same, you yeah. know, after Chris went. But, you know, fuck it, man. That's why we got, that's why we got the DVDs for it. You know what really killed wrestling? At the, the best, the best years going into early two thousand was the fact that I mean, you had you didn't just have WWF, and yes, I fucking said WWF because guess what? Back then they were the fucking WWF. Right. Everybody wants to. I I, I, I hate it when people. <laughs> Like when you when you hear out there, people always referring to eighties and nineties WWF as WWE. It wasn't fucking WWE back then. Yeah. WWF. It was WWF up until I think what like two thousand and three. Yeah, all because of the bullshit with the World Wildlife Foundation. Right. Right. Which so. really. Fucking World Wrestling Federation was before World Wildlife Federation Foundation. Wow. Well, no, let's change. Let's change it to a fucking E. Well, I mean, they do have the rights to use the WWF logo for their older stuff. So, um, but it's yeah, uh, no. I'm saying every time like when, when, I, when I hear people talk about you know like 
uh, like 80s and 90s WWF stuff. And right. you hear him say, oh, yeah, he, uh, he got former WWE champion Sergeant Slaughter. It's like, uh, first of all, Sergeant Slaughter was not a fucking WWE champion. He was a WWF yeah. champion. Right. Well, tomatoes, tomatoes, you know, it's basically yeah. like the same thing. They're just... Mixing. I, don't know, I mean, I know that. I'm just saying. I just wish they like when when they talk about 80s and 90s, fucking just refer to it as WWF. Right. I mean, to me, it's not that big of a deal. I wish they would have been able just to keep the WWF, you know, logo because it was better than WWE, in my opinion. I did yeah. like I did like the commercial they did years ago. Where they said get the f out, you know. I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, you know. And then it became WWE, you know. Yeah. Well, first, first they before that at first they were gonna call it WWFE, and then I guess they tried that for like because I remember at first that they were saying they were you know doing it as WWFE. I was like, wow. Yeah, that don't sound right. No, and then they dropped the F and made it WWE. Yeah, get the F out. Yeah, they even, had shirt, they even had shirts back then that said that. See, I didn't know that. I'd have to look. I'm going to oh, look that up on you, Go ahead and look. Because I remember when you go back and you watch wrestling around that time period, you'll see the wrestlers, you know, wearing the shirts like, get the F out, you know. Right. You're saying that there's shirts that said WWFE on it. No, I'm talking... Oh! They had, they had shirts saying, get the F out. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. I'm talking about, like, right before all that shit, cause I remember I seen it on fucking uh, TV or whatever, they were referring to the champion as the WWFE champion. Right. Like, that's fucking retarded. Fucking dumb, man. Dumb. But it doesn't matter because nowadays it sucks. And, uh, yeah. um. I mean, you do. I mean, what? Everybody can say it, but truly, wrestling sucks. Right. Now. It really sucks, you know? Like, like, I know, I know this, I know everybody says that, oh, well, you know, NXT's doing good shit. This, this, I like. No, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not impressed by any of the wrestling today. I mean, it's just... Well, except for like, uh, NWA, power. Yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about like, like, power. I go back and, and watch wrestling from the from the early 90s. Right. It's like, man, like, just the, the superstars that they had at the time, everybody was big and bulky and... Had, had cool ass yeah, they had their own gimmicks going. Yeah, you know they you had, had like you, like you had fucking demolition. You had the fucking road warriors. You had you know the nasty boys. Yeah, you had Razor Ramon. You know. Yeah, you, you know. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, one of the wrestler wrestlers that you like that we were talking about that got pinned with one finger. Oh, yeah, Tatanka. Tatanka, right. What year did he yeah. start off in the WWF? He, start, he started out about... Ah, uh, shit. I want to say he started in, like, sometime in 91. Okay. How long did he because last? I, because, I, because I actually was... I was watching some old wrestling the other day, and I, I ran across an, uh, a match from, like, a house show... But it was aired, it had commentary and everything. It was a match between the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and Tatanka. But Tatanka at the, in this match wasn't called Tatanka. He was going by his real name of Chris Chavis, or Chavis. Okay. And it was a pretty good fucking match. And surprisingly, that Tatanka lost the match. He fucking... Million Dollar Man put his ass uh, to sleep with the Million Dollar Dream. Yeah, it says, uh, you know, Tatanka, he received his first tryout match with the WWF 
on January of uh, 1991 against Dale Wolf, Wolfie. Oh yeah. At the uh, WWF Wrestling Challenge taping. Huh. See, I don't remember that at all. He yeah, received. I mean, he received the second tryout in February. Of ninety one against the uh, Brooklyn Brawler at the WWF uh, uh, Superstars taping in Orlando, Florida. Wow, oh, the old Brooklyn Brawler, Steve Lombardi. Nice. <laughs> so he was I there remember. for a few years. Yeah. It, it just it just sucked, man, because they built him up like you know they were gonna build him up to be like a big star and then it's just like before you knew it it's like oh no you're gonna fucking lose your first match ever by getting knocked the fuck out and being completely humiliated by being pinned with a fucking finger <laughs> yeah which ruined his fucking career right it did it did it's like like nobody took him serious after that like everybody's like no he if he loses like that he ain't no fucking main event player Right. It says, you know, it's like when, when have you ever seen a top fucking talent take a loss like that? Um, not too often. You, 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 ever, seen, you, you ever seen uh, fucking Hulk Hogan take a loss like that? With the, with you ever the, seen uh, fucking Bret Hart take a loss like that? Sting take a loss like that? Blair take a loss like that? No. No. No, yeah, that's too bad. And also says yeah. here on uh, March 19th of 96, Tatanka wrestled his final televised match. Uh, yeah, lo losing, to hit yeah, losing to uh, Bret Hart in a non-title match. Tatanka left the WWF in spring of uh, 96. Yeah. But he did continue to appear, it says, in independent promotions. Yeah. He he still appears in indie uh, promotions today. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people don't talk about like certain wrestlers um, like Tatanka and others, you know, that were around. Yeah, I mean, back I mean, then. to me, to me, growing up, when, when I seen Tatanka wrestle, I, I, I was always like, I was like, man, that guy is cool. He's got the you know the really cool look he had the outfit he had the gimmick right. he had that you know style and, and you know he had his own thing going his one thing that was always so funny you remember how like when like Hulk used to always do his whole, his whole like Hulk up thing like Rrr. Tatanka had his own way of like hulking up like if somebody took him over and smashed his head in the ring post he would start getting like pissed off and start doing his damn, you know, like once you see him start doing that war dance, you're like, oh shit, it's on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, yeah after he lost the uh, fucking Lou Big Borga like that, I remember he was like out for, a, dude, he, he was scheduled for the main event of Survivor Series that year. He was supposed to team with Luger and the Steiner brothers against Yokozuna, Ludwig Borga, and the Quebecers. Right. And then it's like, oh no, we're gonna take the Tonka out and we're gonna put the fucking Undertaker in. Yeah. I, and I remember the Tonka came back for like a month later and it's just like he it's like nobody gave a sh really gave a shit about him afterwards. Like, like they looked at him like he was a fucking joke. Like it was like, oh, you, oh yeah, you're you're the guy that got beat by pinned with one finger. Yep, yeah, and yeah. that messed came up back his and he, yeah, Remember, he um, it seemed like when he came back, he was just put in fucking mid card, and he stayed there until like. Remember, uh, summertime in 94, they turned him fucking heel, and he joined the Million Dollar Corporation. He, you know, had a little bit of success with that, but then before you know it there, it was like, well, right back to mid-card. Yeah, right. 
That's fucked up. I mean, some of the wrestlers did over the years get fucked over, you know. Yeah. And he he was uh, one of them. And it sucked too, man. Like, you know, I thought I was like, dude, I was like, if he, if, if he would have been pushed right, I mean, he'd have been a damn good, you know, semi or main event talent, you know. Right. I mean, the the, the, the thing that pissed me off is that. His whole run in the WWF, he never got the chance to win any fucking championship. Like he was, he was supposed to win the Intercontinental Championship at um, at WrestleMania Nine against Shawn Michaels, but because Shawn Michaels was such a fucking bitch at the time, went went whining and crying to Vince like. Oh, he's oh, Tonga's got attitude problems. Oh no, keep the belt on me. I think it's wise to keep the belt on me. He's you give it to him, he's gonna fuck up. Blah blah blah. blah. Okay, we'll change it. Tonga's gonna win, be a disqualification. You'll keep the belt. Yeah, things get changed quite often. You notice? Yeah. I don't know how Vince was able to run the WWF. You know, you, it had to been like in his blood, big time, obviously. To yeah. run, a, run a company like that and to, and to be able to work like that. You want to talk about a workhorse, dude. Yeah. That guy is a high-performance worker, big time. Like, the average person couldn't even do what he does, you know, back in the day. Hell no. Nah. But it says you here... Know, you know, it's funny. You go back and you watch all the, or like the early 90s stuff. And right. Vince, you know, Vince was always uh, on commentary. Right, in the like 80s and 90s. Yeah, he commentated on superstars, he commentated on Raw, he commentated the fucking pay-per-views. He commentated on Shotgun Saturday Night. Yeah. And it's like, you know, Vince, Vince, Vince was cool, like, you know, was cool when he was on commentary, because, right. you know, he, he had a good commentary voice. Yeah, he had the right voice for it. Yep. And then he wrestled after the whole Bret Hart thing. Yeah, he uh, wrestled in the 99 uh, Royal Rumble when he was having a whole feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, right. Uh, also, uh, one thing I wanted to mention about Tatanka is that he is, it says he appears in WWE 2K18 and WWE 2K19 as a playable character, which is kick-ass. No. Oh. So if you ever pick up any, you know, uh, wrestling games, go after, you know, 2K19 or 2K18. Hey, I, I, I get a 2K18 and see what it would look like with Tatanka be, being the uh, WWE champion. Yep. And he's also in... Uh, 2K17, but it, he's a, as a DLC, so you'd have to download him. Oh, man. But that's all good. You can just get either 2K18 or 19, and he'll be on the disc. Yeah. Which is cool. You know, you know dude, what's funny is, you know, they're up to, like, what? They're on, what, 2K20 now? As of right now, um, yeah, there's 2K20, 21 got canceled because there were so many fucking bugs and they need, you know, you can't pump out video a video game every year, I'm sorry, you know, uh, without there yeah. being bugs. You know, the average game takes about three years to make and when you rush a game like that, you're going to get bugs. And, yeah. uh, you know, so, they, so obviously how they were doing it is... They want to make their fucking quota of every year, of, you know, pumping out these fucking 2K games. And 21 got canceled, but they're they're adding a different wrestling uh, video game. I forgot the name of it. It's like a beat 'em up. Let me look. Oh, okay, cool. Let me look up. Uh, I've already did a my thoughts video on that on the on the. Uh, trailer a while back but it uh yes they got the new wrestling game from 2k let me look up the fucking name of it uh, i think it's a uh, wwe uh 2k battlegrounds oh okay cool yeah and um you know it comes off you know it's for the xbox one ps4 
Now, I think it's only going to be like 40 bucks, um, which is cool. And it does look cool, you know. I mean, it looks, it, you know, what's nice is it's totally different. It reminds me of um, kind of like All Stars, you know. But this, I think, oh, has, yeah. this one has, like, a bigger roster, I think. I think there was, like, from what I heard, there was, like, 70 fucking wrestlers in this bitch. Yeah, that's a lot. Dude. That's a lot, yeah. I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking maybe 30 or 40. I wasn't expecting yeah. no fucking 70. I was like, wow, that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> you know, um, let's talk about 2K Battlegrounds. So I'm looking up its Wikipedia. So it's going to be, you know... Put out for, uh, let's see, it's out for uh, PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and uh, let's see, and 2K Banner, 2K Battlegrounds will replace the WWE 2K21 for this year, you know, because it got canceled due to the negative reception surrounded 2K20 after it's released, duh, because of the fucking bugs and shit, you guys need more time. You know, you can't pump out a game every year. Fuck that. Yeah. You know, you should wait about, wait till you work out the bugs, not just put out a game full of bugs and then, like, fix the bugs later in updates. That's fuck. that fucking pisses me off. Because not everybody has online. So if you get a game that's full of bugs and they don't have online, they're fucked. You know? Yeah. You know, th that's why games need that's, to be done right the first be, uh, time. That's when you look at that, that'd be about 50, 60 bucks straight down the fucking toilet. Straight down the fucking toilet. Unless if you have online to fucking, you know, update the uh, your game so that, you know, the bugs get fixed. But man, you know, the whole online thing pisses me off anyways with DLC and bug fixing and all that shit. You, you know, I like the simple old days of gaming where you got the game, it was done right the first time, and you could just play the fucking thing, you know. And every now and then you would get bugs or whatnot, but so what? It was just like not as bad as it is now, you know. No, yeah. Nowadays, you know, the bug, there's a, just like some games just come with a lot of like bugs, man. It's like, wow, guys, what the fuck? You know, yeah. like 2K20. But yeah, I, I, you know, 2K uh, Battlegrounds looks pretty cool. And it, it will be a future buy for me. Um, for sure. I mean, it looks cool, you know, with the big-ass uh, roster. It, it, it looked, like I said, it's more of like a fighting game than it is like a wrestling game. You know, so... Is there, is there anything like that? Uh, remember that game we used to play when we were ki uh, growing up? That in your house game. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's probably going to be more kind of like that, you know, in your house, the arcade game, you know, from the nineties. Those yeah. those are more of like beat 'em ups than than they are wrestling with, you know. So kind of like that, but you know, I've seen trailers on this Two K Battlegrounds, and it looks pretty much. I want to say. The closest game it looks like is all uh, all stars, you know, cool. WWE All Stars, which I do have on the PS3. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that game. There's a lot of games I want to get, uh, but mostly I just go after old school video games. You know, I wait till the yeah. new games drop down in price, and then I'll you know get them. But. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, a lot of different wrestling games um, are coming out in 2020. Not just the Battlegrounds, but um, I also wanted to mention... Let me look it up. Because I always forget the names of this these games. Another wrestling game that looks like an old school, you know, 90s. It's uh, called Retro Mania... Wrestling, which is pretty kick ass. Let's see, and that's supposed to be coming out. Oh, well, by the time this podcast gets put out, um, the game will probably already be out. Um, but as of right now, it's not out. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but by the time, yeah, Retromania Wrestling, as of right now, you know, still, it's pretty close to being done. I think it's, uh, it'll be out soon, but like I said, by the time this podcast gets put out, it will, it will probably be out by then, because you know me, I like, I don't, I don't post my videos right away, I hold on to them for a while, and, you know, spread things out. But yeah, I'm in the move now. Now I'm in the mood to play some wrestling video games. Damn it! <laughs> it's it's too bad you weren't here, bro. Because me and you, we can go like uh, co-op and uh, kick some ass. Oh, yeah. You know, one of these days, bro. I, I wish we could hang out so that you could be part of my couch co-op series, man. I would love that. I love to, I love to do it, man. Hell yeah, we might have to do like some sort of in the future. Some sort of online thing. You might have to get a PS4. Maybe we, we could do like an online co-op game. You know, uh, I don't know, like the Sega Genesis Collection or something. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not really an online person at all. I only go online just to, you know, if I want to download something that's like that goes on sale yeah. for dirt cheap or free. Because a lot of times, you know. PlayStation, they'll have their uh, flash sales once in a while, and when they do, if they got something that I'm interested in, like pinball, you know, or, or certain games, I'll download it. But I mostly yeah. just prefer to buy games. But it's all good. Physical over digital bit for me. But yeah. sometimes I do buy, uh, you know digital because I, I can't find the physical and a lot of times uh, the digital will be cheaper than the physical you know yeah. depending on what you get and stuff and sometimes the, so, certain games are just digital you can't find a physical copy whatsoever you know so yeah that's, so how, that's how I am with about uh, movies I'd rather have you know the physical the, the, the physical copy you know yeah, me too. I mean, I don't like... That's why I give away my uh, digital codes every year. Uh, because I'm not interested in digital, you know. Yeah. I like to have the physical copy. I like to be able to, you know... If I'm in the mood to watch something, just pop the fucking thing in and watch it, you know. I don't yeah, want to... exactly. I don't want to have to go online and do this and sign into this just to watch something. I'm not jumping through hoops to do something simple, you know. Yeah. It's like, like you know, I I, um, I got to the point, I, I kind of hated going to movie theaters, you know? It's like, why would I want to pay, all, like, all this money to go see a movie, sitting there with a bunch of people? It's like, I, I get more enjoyment watching a movie in the privacy of my own home. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like watching both ways. I, I You know, I used to you go know? to the theaters. I loved the theaters because, the, you know. But yeah, I haven't been in the theaters I, in a long time. Yeah, I like I like the movie theaters too, and so I started getting stuck with always an annoying motherfucker behind me every time I'm, I'm watching a movie. Like the last two movies I went and seen, both times like I got stuck with some I don't know if they were drunk or on drugs or what, <laughs> but like the guy right. was sitting behind me, and the guy just would not shut the fuck up. What would it mean? He was talking during the whole movie? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, he's just like, blah, 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 blah. like, you just hear him behind you, like, he's talking behind me, like, he's talking to his friends or whatever, and he's just, blah, 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 and I'm, like, sitting there trying to watch the fucking movie while he's just back behind me, blah, 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 and I wanted to, I wanted to tell him so bad, man, would you please shut the fuck up and let me watch, let me hear this fucking movie, dude? Oh uh, yeah, I hate when shit like that happens. It's like you, it's, go, you it's, go in the pain. Yeah, it, like, it was like one time. Okay, I understand that, but then the, the you know when I went to see the next movie, same fucking thing. It had somebody behind me. No, not this. The second time was worse. And not only did I have somebody behind me, blah 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 blah, but some right. also somebody decided to bring their fucking baby into the movie theater. Oh great. And about ten minutes into the movie, you just start hearing, boy, boy. <laughs> oh man, like, well, I, I literally like wanted to get up and just walk out the door. I'm like, well, 
There's my no... enjoyment for that movie just got ruined. Thank y'all very much. <laughs> well, here's what you do, man. You buy yourself a big ass TV with some speakers. And, it will, and put it in your bedroom, and, and it will kind of be like a movie theater, and you'll be in the privacy of your own place without any of that yeah. shit going down. I mean, you know? hell, I mean, I got a I got a thirty two inch TV and a shitload of movies. That's what that's that's basically my movie theater. Here's what you do: go out somewhere, get yourself a big seventy five inch TV. <laughs> yeah. And. Okay. Uh, Put a put a seventy five inch TV in this little fucking trailer that I live in. Yeah, and then uh, and then get yourself uh, some speaker systems, and then yeah. Uh, that way, as soon as I hit the speaker, blow that bitch up. <laughs> 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 blow your place up, man. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm, fucking you, you hear me? You kick out of speakers. You see the whole trailer just crumple like right. <laughs> Want to <laughs> see? Yeah, that's the power of fucking sound, man. Yeah, just blow the whole trailer wide out. <laughs> Watch what this DTS surround sound system does to my fucking place. Yeah. <laughs> it crumbles uh, it. Dude, that would make an awesome <laughs> YouTube video. Now, that would be a fucking if YouTube you put, video, right? If you, if you put a ridiculous sound system <laughs> in a little fucking trailer, man. Right. It'd be like, yeah, check out, check out my new sound system. Right. You hit the button, you see the trailer just boom. Yeah, now that's a commercial, man. Hell yeah, you should put up a camera saying, "Now watch how fast I can tear down my place with this DTS surround system for you guys," and just blast that bitch and watch your whole place just crumble. <laughs> be like, be like fucking blowing something up with TNT. It'd be like in the movie uh, Back to the Future when uh, Michael J. Fox plugs in his guitar and yeah, starts that bitch. That, yeah, I remember that giant ass speaker. <laughs> it blew his ass all the way over. Not only, well, not only was it a badass speaker, but if you watch when he's clicking all the dials, I mean, he's turning that, he turned that bitch up to the fucking moon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck do you think was going to happen? I know. What the hell do you expect was going to happen, bro? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? So I can eat. Doc, doc, you know, in real life, in real life, that would have probably blown anybody's eardrums out. Yeah. You know, they would have been it's trouble. It's funny, he, he goes flying across the room. He, he gets up and goes, whoa, rock and roll. <laughs> Yeah. Remember uh, what was this, the, the thing about the clocks? Where he's like, he's like, my my experiment worked. Uh, the clocks are all twenty five minutes slow. He's like, wait a minute, are you telling me it's eight twenty five? I'm late for school. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking that awesome. Good, yeah. Yeah, that's what you need, man. Big ass TV, big ass stereo system, man. Then you have your own theater in your own place, man. That's the way to go. Yeah, I would love to do yeah, that but someday. You know what? Get stuff like that takes fucking money, bro. Oh yeah, but nowadays, you know, like the the 4K TVs, they drop down big time. You know, you yeah. can get a 65 inch, you know, for like three, four hundred, five hundred bucks, which ain't shit. You know, yeah. 75 inches are a little more expensive, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm saying, if you, if you had the house for a 75-inch TV, that's one thing. Right. When you, when you live in a little fucking trailer like I do, right. you yeah. know, you, there's no way I could fit a fucking 75-inch yeah, yeah, TV. Yeah, well, true. Your, your place ain't that small, is it? Uh, I mean, it's, what, what, what are you, it's a one-bedroom trailer, dude. Right. Well, you know, but I mean, I mean, it's just a uh, big ass TV in here. In here would work. Not fucking. Would just would not look right. I mean, I, I got, I had a uh, what was it? I bought a fifty-five inch TV one time. Put it in the, brought it in here. Every everywhere I set it up, like against the wall, over here, over there, it just. It just did not look right anywhere I put it. Right. So, I, hell, I think I wound up just giving the damn TV to my dad. It was like, here, here you go. 
it doesn't, doesn't look anywhere good here in my place, so you need a TV, here you go, dude. Fuck it, yeah. Like, I'm going to stick to my 32-inch, you know? My little 32-inch, had it right here on the table by my bed, where I, you know, I just, uh, I could just kick back and relax, watch TV, watch my YouTube, watch movies, whatever, and... Yeah, that works you know, for you, right? I, I, I also, when I'm ready to go to bed, it's just turn the damn thing off, and night-night. You know, speaking of a 32-inch, I have a 32-inch also that I use for my, uh computer as well yeah. I plug in a 32 inch because usually computers they come with like a 22 inch or something like that 24 but a while back I picked up a 32 inch that you could you know plug your computer to and I used a 32 yeah. inch for my computer so watching YouTube and stuff from time to time which is cool uh, what's cool dude what's cool is just uh, my, my 32 inch TV and my PlayStation Three, I bought. I bought the two of them, brand brand new. I believe it was two thousand eleven. I believe I, I bought those. Right. And and that was nine years, and and they still work as good as they did back then. Which is good. Yeah. Cause funny you know, thing about it is, like I said, funny thing about my PS3, I don't even, I don't even play video games in the damn thing. I, I use it for, I use it strictly for, for like to get on YouTube with. Well, I mean, you do play from time to time columns with the Sonic. Yeah, I play Genesis. columns. I play columns once in a while, or you know, I'll, I'll pop a movie on my PS3. Or, uh, I mean, I do have a, I do have a wrestling game. I do have a WWE 12. Right. And you got yeah. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Yeah. Which is a I good, have, good I play have. columns from that. But basically the only game I play on there. Right. Yeah, because we used to I mean, play columns a lot back in the day. Yeah. You know, on the PS2 I, uh, you Genesis used to, Collection. Used to be Dead serious, like oh, yeah. competitive. Oh yeah, but now you set the bar so damn high. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck that. I don't, even, I don't even remember what I set it to. I don't know. I think you were really close to like a million points or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you set the fucking shit high as hell, which is crazy. I think it took yeah. you over an hour, about two hours, to set that fucking score too. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's... I, you know, it's funny, when we, when, we, when we used to hang out, we used to play columns, you know, it was funny, we, we'd sit there and we would just go to fucking war, like, <laughs> let's, right. let's, see, let's see even go the longest, and... Right. I remember, I, as soon as it, I would look over sometimes, I'd try to Oops. your, uh... The phone. Your, uh, thing getting up there, and I was like, okay, I'm still down here, so I, I got him. The minute I see, you know, your uh, blocks were getting up ahead of mine, I was like, once you, that happened, I was like, I got this. Alright. Yeah, yeah it, gets, it gets pretty tough. I, You know, you have to pause the game to, to you know, calculate your next move. Yeah. You know, if you're going to get anywhere. I don't know, how, like, it's rare that anybody could just play the game straight without pausing it. Well, at some point, it's like, if I really get into one of my good zones when I'm playing columns, like, I can, like, you know, I'll be fucking quick about it. Like, I won't pause it. And I'll just be like, it's just, you know, like, keeping a sharp eye on what's falling next and what everything is. All right, let's do, you know. Right. But if I reach a point where it's like I'm getting into trouble, then I'll pause it and realize, you know, start to look, okay, what can I do to get this knocked down? Right. Yeah, I think it's pretty tough, and it's fun as hell, and the music is even pretty good. Yeah. But it's the, a really fun game, dude. It's like it's it's like you know, like I'm I'm competitive, even 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 when I like I will set a score on columns and and then next go I was like, okay, I gotta beat that score. 
Oh, I know. You get like, I'm, not, like, I'm so fucking competitive when it comes <laughs> to shit like that. Even, even myself, it's like I have to be my own fucking score. Right. It's best to be competitive against yourself. That way you can, you know, keep topping yourself. Yeah. You know, but yeah. But, ev but eventually, you know, like, like you said, I'll get to that point where I'll set it up so damn high and be like, Shit, am I ever gonna reach that point again? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will once you uh, get in the zone. The same way with yeah. uh, the Metroid Prime Pinball for the Nintendo DS, we got so yeah. I mean, uh, that was another game me and you were damn highly competitive. Oh yeah, in. I fucking love that game, dude. And I just <laughs> like I like really love playing it. Really it. pissed me off though one night. You had you you set the score. I sat there for two hours playing that game, trying to fight so I could beat the, beat your score. Right. And then when I finally beat your score, I was like, "Here you go, dude. Enjoy the next two hours trying to beat that." <laughs> and then, and then, fucking twenty minutes later, I hear you say, "I bought, I beat it." I'm mm. like, "Are you got to be fucking kidding me?" Mm. And I walked over there, seeing your score, I'm like. You son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, we got pretty competitive. Like, what the fuck, dude? We got to the point where you set the bar so high that I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm not going to, you know, yeah. fuck with this no more. I remember, I remember when you did that, too. <clears throat> we were sitting there. I, I I worked so hard to get the score, like, way up there. Be like, there yeah. you go, man. Try to beat that. Right. And, like, you, start, you started to get into a game, and then, like, 10 minutes in or something you were just like man fuck this alright fine you can you can have that score like you like you like I'm ta like like you finally like tapped the fuck out was like alright man fuck it you win right but then <laughs> but then years later when I picked up a, another DS system and started playing Metroid Pinball again Prime Pinball uh I actually beat that fucking score again because the the scores stay within the game, you know. It, the saves, uh, the, the uh, saves uh, still cool. save, which is was cool. And I, I was like, all right, let's get into it. And I, not only did I beat it, but I shattered the fucking record that we had going. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, you know, because I love pinball, and I just like fuck it. I got right back into it, and it, you know. Like, you need to pick that up, a DS and Metro Prime pinball, dude. You'll be, like, sucked in. Again. Yeah, if, I, if, I, if I ever find one cheap somewhere, I'll pick one up. Right. Yeah, I know one time at GameStop, this was a couple of years ago, they had the older model. I think it was the original model DS. They had a cool sale going on for, like, 20 bucks. And I was like, oh, man, that's pretty good. I'm going to go get that. And sure enough, I, I ended up picking one. I didn't get the color I wanted. I had to go with what they had, which was like a, I want to say it was like a purplish pink type color. Oh, you know? man. Yeah, yeah it, was, it wasn't my color. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just a system, and I can put decals on it anyways. Yeah. You know, so I was like, fuck it. You know, but uh, the game itself is just fun, man. Those games, yeah. Columns and Metroid Prime Pinball, man, talk about being addicted, man, it's crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's funny how how much technology has advanced in all these years. Because oh, yeah. you know, you think about when, like, you know, I can remember when they came out with the you know first Nintendo, right in the eighties. And I remember they had that. I remember that when they came out with the fucking Game Boy, right. Yeah. And it was like I, I remember. I remember people when I used to go to school. Other kids would like sneak a Game Boy in, and then like when nobody was looking, they'd be sitting there like playing a game on their fucking Game Boy. Like, <laughs> wow, must it must must be nice to have one of those. Well, the Game Boys, I believe, were black and white games. Uh, you know, back then. And, uh, yeah, and I remember they came out with uh, things shortly after that. They came out with Super Nintendo. Yeah, well, then Super Nintendo came out in the 90s. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, they had Game Sega Boy Genesis Color. And so, yeah, 90s really took off big time. 
with the consoles. Yeah. So you had Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, Sega uh, Dreamcast. Dreamcast, Sega Saturn. Um, yeah, it was just... GameCube, yeah, the GameCube. Well, yeah, that came out in the early 2000s. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, as far as... I mean, it's, look at how everything's like... Like I said, you go back and you remember us playing like the original Nintendo or a Game right. Boy. And you play the P- PS4 or Xbox One. Yeah. Now, there's a huge difference. You know. Well, but, I remember, I remember uh, uh, years ago uh, my, my cousin came over and I think he was like at the time he was uh, I was he was like 12 or 13 years old. And I, I had uh, an original Nintendo hooked up that I was playing uh, Super Mario Brothers on. Right. And, you know, this kid who's never known about, you know, about the Nintendo, you know, was used to PS3s or 4s or whatever the fuck they had at the time, but he started, we started playing Mario, uh, Mario Brothers, and he's watching, and he just started, like, shitting on the graphics. He's like, yeah, you can tell this is an old as hell game. It's they've got the stupidest graphics I've ever seen. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is eighties. This is eighties graphics here, dude. They you know two thousand twenty fucking graphics. This is nineteen eighties. What 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 game are you talking about? The, the fucking Super Mario Brothers. Oh, the original. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. About the, how the graphics and the movements and uh, the, right, and that's what, it, well, who gives a fuck about graphics? It's about the gameplay, yeah. you know. Well, that's man, how I've always you know, been. You gotta figure, you know, he's in the, like he he's in the games like fucking like Call of Duty and right, Halo right. and all that bullshit. Yeah, because the newer like, generation don't know about the old school yeah. as much you, as we do. Yeah, you, you go to playing all those fucking games. And then you go back and you play the original fucking Super... You look at the original Super Mario Brothers for the original Nintendo, and you're like, hey, wow, this this game looks like it sucks. Yeah, just because the graphics ain't up to their standards. Yeah, just because it looks all like... It looked... You know, trying to say, oh, it, you know, talking about it looks old as hell. I was like... It is old as hell. Yeah. But uh, let me tell you something. The Mario Brothers games in the 80s were some of the biggest games of all time, along with the Zelda games, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, the, everybody back then was loving those games. And those games are still fun. So I don't, you know, yeah. I don't get it, man. I don't, was, I personally there, don't there care about the graphics. There games from the Nintendo that I, I remember, like, loving, man. Like, like, I remember they had the RoboCop game. Right. I uh, had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, uh, I've got both. The uh, WrestleMania game. Right, I've got all those. Yeah. I've either got them physical or I got a lot of them downloaded to my uh, Nintendo Wii system. And I got yeah. some downloaded to my Wii U older like NES or Super NES games. I got a lot actually downloaded to my Wii system that I haven't even played on my channel yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, it's, it's, well. Yeah, I know. I gotta get you on know, it. You, know, you, you got, you got the fucking content, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the kind of person that just, I like to just, you know, take my time and uh, not post everything all at once, and you know what I mean. Hold on, yeah. to, hold on to certain games for a while, you know, and then eventually, you know, film making them, posting them. And, I got a lot of pinball tables. I haven't even posted on my channel yet either. I do a lot of gameplays. I do a lot of filming behind the scenes, anyways, which is crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I if I were to post as much as I actually filmed behind the scenes, it would be you have pr- hours and hours oh, yeah. and hours I have, and hours of shit. Yeah, I probably have um, like two hundred gameplay videos already filmed and have haven't even posted them yet you know yeah. think about that 200 gameplay videos that's crazy i've already got like 50 
as of right now, I got like 50 of like my retro game time series videos already filmed, but you know, I'm only posting videos like uh, you know, like once a week or once every other week. I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, you know a whole lot of those posted, but I've got already already 50 of them filmed. You know, same thing, like I said, with gameplay videos. I've got a, whole, a couple hundred gameplays already filmed. You know, I want to have... My thing is, like, if anything ever happened to my systems, you know, because systems don't last forever, I want to be able to have gameplay videos already filmed. Uh, that way I can post them, you know, down the road, you know. You know, I like to have, you know... You know, that comes with any, you know, uh, you know video that I do I like to have stuff already filmed in on a backup hard drive you know yeah. um, just in case if anything happens I have you know you know videos backed up you know yeah I know, you know. I know what you're talking about brother so I like doing things that way filming I do a, like a variety of things I got a, <laughs> got a lot of different things going on I like that I like um have a bunch of different uh, new series. The series that I started this year, I, I really like. Like we started this podcast this year in 2020. I started my retro game time series, and I also started a what if series um, in 2021. I got a few things that I want to do. There's another gaming series that I want to do, but I gotta have money in order to do the setup the way I want. So we're gonna. That may happen, that may not happen, who knows. But, I mean, there's probably going to be, you know, a few more series that I'll start next year as well. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm crazy like that, you know. We're crazy, we're crazy up in here, son. Yeah, crazy train up in this bitch, you know. Yeah. Because to me, you know, you know, like a lot of YouTubers, they'll just do like one or two things, I notice. Like, yeah. like, like say music, they'll talk about music. Right, or they'll talk about movies, and they'll just do like movie reviews, and that's pretty much it. But yeah. me, me personally, I can't just do one or two things. I have to have a variety of things going on in order to keep me my blood yeah. interested. You know? Yeah, yeah. Why not, man? It's like you know, it's it's your YouTube channel. It's like, I mean, where does it state that you know your YouTube channel? only has to only be about one fucking thing. <laughs> I know. You know, and I that's the thing. I have to have that's why my channel is about three different things. It's wrestling, yeah. movies, and, and video it, games. It's not it's not just about three things. It's about the three things that that you know a lot about. Right, that I love and I grew up with. And that's yeah. why and then and then from there I branch off and do all kinds of different series to keep myself going. It keeps me interested. You yeah. know, keeps me, uh, keeps the fire in me, you know. Otherwise, I would just get bored with this. Because, to be honest, this is easy for me. This is, like, too easy for me. Because I'm a, I've been filming for years. You know, I picked up, the, when I got my camera in the 90s, for when I graduated, uh, I did a fuckload of filming. You know, yeah, we, we, no, we, we always used to fucking... I remember we used to uh, we used to try to make our own movie shit, right? Our own kung fu fighting, You're right? We did all shit. kinds of shit, video games, uh, backyard wrestling. We tried to make our own movie, fight scenes, and I, I mean, we just did a lot of just a variety of stuff. You know, also uh, family yeah. home videos, um, and so it's just in my blood to film. You know, yeah. and so because this YouTube thing, it's to me, it's fun and it's it's kind of easy. It, it, I could literally fucking post like ten or twenty videos a day, every day, seven days a week, and it wouldn't mean shit to me. But I don't want to like, you know, I, I'm sure I've talked about this before. I'm not sure, but I don't want to spam my fucking channel and piss people off. You know, yeah. So I only I only post a couple videos a week, but I film so much more behind the scenes. Like, yeah. this is nothing for me. And I never run out of ideas. I've always got something going on in my mind. Like, where, like I'm always thinking, 
hmm, what to do next year? Is there something that I want to add? Do I want to like add a new series? Is there something that I can branch off and do that's cool? And I always try to think of my own original ideas. I don't really like to copy anybody, you know. Yeah. I like to just do things my own way, you know, to my liking, you know. So. Oh yeah. That's why I think I'm. I was made for YouTube because. I've been filming long before fucking YouTube. You know, yeah. I was. Uh, but you said we got, you know, we, we got all, we got probably shit tons of videos that we made growing up. Like yeah, we got like videos. Backyard rustling, you know. Right, I got videos that I've filmed, and once in a while I'll come across, and I'll be like, I don't remember even fucking filming that. Yeah, remember you know? uh, we, we did. I know you got it up on, uh, I think, yeah, you know, yeah, on your channel yeah. where, uh, yeah, we where got, we, um, we tried to do a Frosted Flakes commercial. Right, right, in the 90s, we did some sort of, uh, we were horsing around and we did a uh, Frosted Flakes commercial. Yeah, basically, I'm, I'm sitting there eat, eating a fucking bowl of Frosted Flakes that, and I guess I see me, like, filming me and we were just like, fuck it, let's, let's do a fucking... Right. And, and remember we kept like like fucking it up because you were like you started talking about oh look at this nice big bowl of frosted flakes <laughs> right, right. And, uh, and, and like I start like I take a bite and at, at first I act like I'm choking you're like alright cut camera cut camera <laughs> yeah so we were horsing around making up like yeah, a pretend we wound, up, we wound up doing three takes and I like how at the, the third take I, fuck, I take a bite and, and I spit it out. I'm like, this cereal tastes like shit. And you're like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we made our own little, like, pretend uh, Frosted Flakes commercial rehearsal thing. I don't know what to call it. But I do remember yeah. that in the, the background. Funny thing about it, I, I don't even remember us fucking filming that. Yeah, me neither. And what, what else is cool about that is you can hear in the background. So we were watching wrestling. Yeah, because you can we hear. Watching, it. Yeah, we were watching. Uh, you hear that we were watching uh, an Owen Hart match. Right. What was this from? Like a Monday Night thing? I'd have been, dude. You know, this was what year was this? Ninety seven, ninety eight. No, I like that. Yeah, we were. You, we were actually watching a fucking Owen Hart match. Yeah, and you know, we're sitting there, yeah, we're sitting there, fucking just chilling out, and like I said, I guess I, I was eating a bowl of cereal, and you're just like, fuck it, let's let's uh, let's film the fucking stuff. You know what's funny too? It wasn't even, it wasn't even the actual like Frosted Flakes brand. Remember, it was like a, you're right. It, it was, was like a Spark. Fucking, uh, Spart store yeah, Spartan brand. grocery store brand. I might actually, because I plan on it sometime. I want to make a video uh, called uh, "Life in the '90s," and I want to put together like a compilation of things that went on that year because I did so much filming. And I yeah. might, I might actually put that in there with us, you know, doing that like spoof commercial thing on Frosted yeah, Flakes. Right. And uh, so that you guys can hear, you know, the wrestling in the background that we were watching at the time, too. Yeah. That's you, weird. You, you can hear at one point, you can hear, you know, our catch is an elbow. <laughs> right. And that's weird because he passed away. And it's weird that we were, you know. Just sitting there watching. He was alive. Cereal, right. He was alive during that time. And watching the match. So it had to have been during, like, 97 or 98 when we filmed that. You know, yeah. and then because I know he had passed away what in somewhere in '99, right? It was like May, yeah, it was May of '99. It was at the fucking uh, over over the edge uh, pay per view, right? Something like that. You want you want to know something about that? I um I actually remember the the night that he died because they had the pay per view and I and um yeah it was that May. year. And like it so happened, I had the news on, and the first thing they came up on when they, you know, was announcing, they said, uh, a, you know, a wrestler f fell to his death tonight, 
at, at a pay per view, and I'm like, what the, f-? you know, like what the fuck? <laughs> and I ran over there and started watching it, and and they said, you know, said it was Owen Hart who mm-hmm. was performing as the Blue Blazer. They said he fell from the roof of the building into the ring and was later pronounced dead. And it's like, oh my god, you know? Yeah, that's yeah, that was horrible. Finding out about that. Yeah. You know, yeah, hell of a wrestler, you know. That 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 was a that was a hell of a way to go to bed that night, thinking, man, Owen Hart's gone. Yeah, that's that's you never know when your time is, man. That's why you gotta live your life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because you never know when your time is. You know, people think they're gonna live forever and they wanna. You know, spread all this kind of hate and shit going on. I just, I don't understand it, man. You got this one life. Live it good. You know, because yeah. you're not going to be enjoy, young forever. Enjoy, enjoy your life. Yeah, enjoy your your youth, your life, because you, when you get older, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to. You got to think, kid, look, hey, we're, we're in our fucking 40s now, man. Right. You, you look at some of those uh, videos of us that back like 20 something years ago and, and it's like man it's like we, we ain't that fucking young no more no. I, you know I would love to go back in time and relive a lot of those moments you know yeah. especially gaming it up with you and Angelo back in the 90s and early 2000s that was fun yeah. I remember man. I remember fucking we went round after round and like Mario Kart oh yeah we would fucking remember, we, used to, uh, we used to play Goldeneye Oh yeah, we got Double O Seven Goldeneye. I yeah. haven't, you know, I love that game. I, I, I had to quit. I had to quit playing that because you were cheating, motherfucker. Cheating? What do you mean? Yeah, like, like when you would kill me, and then like you would know exactly where I was gonna pop back up at, and fucking like as soon as I pop back up, you'd be right there to fucking kill me again. <laughs> that ain't like, cheating. You, 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 you would do that to me. Over and fucking over again. <laughs> that ain't cheating, man. That's just called survival, man. Of that's the fittest, fucking motherfucker. bullshit. You, that's fucking bullshit, though. Hey. You wouldn't even let me fucking, <laughs> like, 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 get, get back in the game. As soon as I popped up, it's like, oh, you're dead. Okay, hey. Oh, forget, oh, you're dead. Okay, I was like, come on, dude. Let me fucking, <laughs> you know, at least try to fucking fight back. Oh, well, you got to take it out with the game developers. They're the one that made it that way. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I, we used to play that a lot, big time. That's another game I have not played on my channel yet. I don't even know if I can because of the music. You know, yeah. uh, the 007 music on there. I'm not sure if I can play that or not. But you, but you know what, like, hey, that uh, the way you were in, uh, in, in Goldeneye, it was uh, at least it wasn't as bad. Uh, Back when I used to play a buddy of mine in that game Halo, and oh, yeah. you want to talk about a true cheap son of a bitch? He he fucking we every time we would uh, we would play on Halo, he would go and get a fucking sniper rifle and just go up into this one place where you couldn't get to him, and he would just sit there and just fucking snipe you out. Damn. Like. And it was basically like the same thing. You pop up somewhere, start moving, and like, boom, you're dead. Like, oh yeah. Like we had a fucking. One, we always have a group of us playing over at his house, and and it, like the like the, all of us other players would get so pissed because he would just grab that fucking sniper rifle and, and go up into that one building and just snipe us all out and like make it to where it's not even fun, and we'd just be like, man. If you're going to keep fucking doing that shit, dude, I fucking quit. Well, there are some gamers out there that are like that that are really good at games like that. I don't know if you remember, there was a guy... Like, do you remember that that uh, the MTV True Life? Yeah. Yeah, True Life, I'm this, True Life, I'm that. Well, there was a show called True Life, I'm a Gamer. And on there, yeah. there, was a guy, there was a kid um, named Fatality. And he was like the best of the fucking best, man. He was winning all kinds of events. I, I don't know actually what happened to him. I'm gonna have to look him up. But uh, he was uh, 
badass back in the day, man. You know, yeah. uh, but that 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 true life I'm a gamer was a great episode. They also they went into the whole uh, Billy Mitchell thing with the Donkey Kong and all that. You know, just yeah. some some people are just so fucking good at games. It's like in your fucking DNA. You know, you could just <laughs> you could play it so well that you can't really be touched. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like a it's, it's like a drug, dude. Like you know, it's like. Like some people, video games are like a drug to them. It's like I gotta play this game. I gotta be the best. I gotta be the best. I gotta know. I gotta know every fucking special move. I gotta play this game so I know every inch of this fucking game. Right. I'm gonna have to look him up. I I, I don't know what happened yeah. to him, but he was a well known kid named. He went by. Fatality. Not only that, but dude, that, that whole when they did that whole series of MTV True Life, like. Right. A lot, of, a lot of the videos they made were really cool. Like they, they even did a uh, uh, a wrestling one. Oh yeah, yeah, they did. Um, yeah, they had, they had that one kid that was going into like they were doing a a past, present, and future like deal. Like the the past superstar was Tony Atlas, who was like still trying to hold on to whatever wrestling he could he has left and. And it's in the present was uh, Triple H, who was, you know, they were following him around leading up to his match with The Rock in a fully loaded strap match. And the future was this kid that was like, you know, who had said he was having, you know, he had the dream of being a superstar. And he was going to like uh, a wrestling school to learn how to wrestle. And started off doing good and then the fucking kid just I don't know just got lazy and just decided like fuck this wrestling shit I, I can't do this right it's not for everybody that's for damn sure no you remember um, you remember Tough Enough when they, they oh, fucking yeah. I forget what season I don't know if you remember if it was one or two but like Triple H fucking came out got in the ring and, and was like just like telling all of them like this ain't for you know this ain't for everybody right. you know if you, if you got if you got a wife and kids you know like and, and if you don't like being away from them well this ain't for you because guess what you're gonna be away from your family you're gonna be away from your families for months and months sometimes right yeah it's a hard and, life you know the, the time about like you know it's such a hard life you, you wake, you wake up. You don't even, you, you don't even remember what the fuck city you're in. <laughs> yeah, I know. Especially if you're out partying with uh, uh, drinking and shit. You know, because a lot of times wrestlers they'll get drunk and shit yeah. at bars, and the but, next day they don't know where the fuck they're at. Yeah. You know. And uh, I remember after after Triple H gave that speech, like two, like two of the the. Two of the of the kids like immediately quit. Like, like one guy stepped forward, like, cause uh, you know he had announced that he had a girlfriend back home that, you know, and he, and he realizes, well, fuck, if I'm away from her, our our relationship's gonna fall apart. Yeah. Fuck this, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. And he you know, quit, and then, then, then uh, a girl stepped forward, like, I don't I don't want to do this. I quit. I mean, like, it, it's it's all fun when you see things from a distance, but when you're in the fucking limelight like yeah. that, you, it's a lot to be in a WWE wrestler. I mean, you got to yeah. train, you got to be in good shape, you got to travel, you got to you know it's a life of pain uh, because yeah. you're getting stiffed all I the mean, time. Yeah, you you got to you got to go out there and perform. Like you you go out there one night you in front of all these people and you're given the match of your fucking life and then you know you you get done with that match go go to the back shower change leave the building get in the car drive four or five hundred fucking miles get get you about three four hours of sleep a meal in you and it's like okay you gotta go work another fucking 30 minute match yeah well it's not always a 30 minute match 
Well, I mean, I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, you got to go out there and be expected to, to give the fucking match that you just gave the night before. Right. I mean, usually matches are like 10, 10 minutes, yeah. give or take, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you know, some are short. But, yeah, you, think about it. You're traveling all the time. You're you're getting injured. Uh, you know, it's painful, man, getting slammed off the fucking mats. You know, yeah, it's painful getting it, stuck by wrestlers. It was funny in that True Life, uh, I'm a pro wrestler series. Even uh, they had Billy Gunn on there talking, and he said some. You know, he said uh, everybody looks at that ring and they're thinking, "Oh, it's so bouncy. It must be just so nice. I want to do that." He's like, "No, trust me. When you're, he's like, when you're getting slammed on it, you're getting dumped on it." Night after night, is like it hurts. It yeah. never stops hurting. You know, yeah. you, you don't get used to, to it hurting. All right, and it's like I said, it's a life of pain. Because, because I mean, if you ever really see what the fucking ring is made out of, dude. Yeah, wood. It's like you get like an inch or two inch thing of padding, a bunch of two by fours, and steel beams. Yeah, and getting slammed out that fucking thing every night's got to suck. Yeah. You know. Well, how about Mick Foley fucking falling through the fucking cage to the fucking ring? Yeah, well, Mick Foley, he, he's one of those guys that can actually take more than the average person when it comes to pain. But he's... Uh, he's I'm saying, we, uh, he, he was probably the only one... That could have took that fall like that, going through the cage to the ring, right. and still be able to get back up. Right. Well, he's a rare. He's a rare yeah, person. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, I didn't see anybody else taking a fucking fall. I don't see Triple H taking a fall like that. No. Or the Rock taking a fall like that. No. Or Stone Cold taking a fall like that. Definitely not. Yeah. But, but but crazy, crazy as hell, Mick Foley would do it. Yeah, but he's he's paying for it now. Yeah. And he's been probably paying for it for years. He's been wrestling since the 80s. And he, he was in ECW, yeah. you know, uh, all of them. WWF, you know, you know, and... He was in, he was in the WCCW, World Class Championship Wrestling. Right, and he, had to, he fought the best of the best. And remember, uh, remember years ago, uh, I forgot where we got at, but I picked up a wrestling, a hardcore wrestling uh, tape called ICP Stranglemania. Right, I remember that from the 90s. And remember, we, we sat there and we watched that those fucking matches. <laughs> and that yeah. was the first time I really, truly saw that hardcore fucking bullshit. Right, right. Like yeah. the barbed wire, the glass, the tacks, the fucking... I was like, why? Why are you guys going out there and just destroying your <laughs> fucking bodies like that? Yeah, that's 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 back when they were over, I believe, in Japan, right? Doing the Japanese yeah. hardcore wrestling shit. Those guys are and fucking it, crazy. It was, like, it was like a deathmatch tournament. Like, Yeah. I remember that. Uh, I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but I remember back in the late 90s, you got the VHS tape of it or something. And yeah, we, we, were out, we were out somewhere, and I, and I saw a copy of it, and I was like, oh, shit, I need to pick this up. And we watched it at another friend's house, and we're like, damn, yeah, that's pretty funny commentary yeah, was, from the ICP guys. Yeah, it was funny that they were doing, you know, the commentary, and they were doing, like, funny-ass commentary, like, like they would call Cactus Jack a uh, Cactus Jack. Right. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. The good old days, man, the good old young days, man. Missed that shit. <laughs> and they call, they said, it's, uh, it's Cactus Sack, it, and his dad prickly balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, like I was saying, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Mick Foley, he's, he, I guarantee you he's in pain every single 
day. He is. I've seen. I've seen. Uh, because of the he shit was he, on, he was on an episode not too long ago of that show called Wife Swap. Right. Where his wife went somewhere and somebody else's wife came to help him. And Mick, Mick was telling her, like, in the mornings, like, he can't fully bend over. And, like, his wife has to put his socks and shoes on for him. Right. That's and how bad it gets. He, yeah, because he's so fucked up, he can't, he can't bend down there and fucking, you know, put socks and shoes on. Right. I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, even Hulk Hogan said that it takes him like an hour and a half just to be able to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. You know. Well, fuck, man. You figure how, look, I mean, look at the fucking, like, Hulk, man. He... You know, everybody can say what they want about Hulk, about how he was backstage, but growing up as a kid, like, I don't, I mean, you know, you, you were, if you were a wrestling fan, you were a fucking Hulkamaniac. Right. You know, you, you always knew that, 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 that motherfucker was, you know, was the man in the WWF. Right. Yeah, and back then, like, yeah. I mean, you, you, look, you, look at the, you look at the career he had, all the fucking monsters that he fought, like Andre, Earthquake, Bundy, Big Boss Man, you know, all, all those matches with all those people, and he's expected to pick them all up and body slam on them. And get slammed you know, by get, them, also. Yeah, you're getting slammed or getting Flashed or getting chopped. Yeah, and it's like so after I, you do that, just just you know, just picking them people up over and over again and slamming them, you know, that fucking puts a lot of stress on your fucking back. Dude. And that, yeah, and if you do that year after year for years, you're you're gonna be in trouble, you know. Yeah. That's why wrestlers you really should get out of it after about four or five years. You should get. They should get out of wrestling. You know, when you're on top for about five years, that's when you should like like Stone Cold. He was smart. He got out of there. You know, before. Well, he was. He wasn't smart. The fact of the matter is, like, his, like he he had to fucking retire. Well, yeah, he was dealing with. Uh, because, what? Yeah, because of, because of his fucking neck, because of Owen Hart dropping him on his damn head. Right, and, and the fact that you know Stone Stone Cold was such a tough ass that yeah, but he, the, you know when he when he had an injury, you know he kept he going for yeah he just he kept working through it. He worked through it until he was just in so much fucking pain all the time that if he, if he didn't fucking quit. If he didn't take the time off, get the fucking surgery he needed to fix it, it was gonna fucking kill him. Right. He was either gonna kill. It was either gonna kill him or it was gonna cripple him. Yeah, but he got out of there long, you know, before yeah, him. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. You know, he could he could have kept wrestling. He could have kept going. If he, right. If, if he would have never hurt his neck, if Owen would have never dropped him on his fucking head. And he, he didn't have his neck problems to worry about. He, he could have probably gone on. He could have wrestled for easily several more years. What year did he drop? Did he get dropped by on? I forgot. 97. 97. But he did wrestle, what, until what, 2003-ish? Well, he, he wrestled, remember, until, uh, until 99... And then by by ninety nine, he said uh, he was having so much neck pain that, and it was affecting him so bad that in ninety nine, that's why they did the angle at at uh, the ninety nine Survivor Series where they had the fucking car come out and run Stone Cold over. Okay. And that would and that would write him off to the angle that they needed, so he could go. Get his fucking neck finally fixed up, so he can take the proper time off to fucking heal up. You know, 
get rejuvenated and come back as a stone cold whoop ass machine that he is. Yeah, but he, uh, he his time off must have been kind of short because I'm looking at his Wikipedia. He had a rivalry with, uh, or he had a feud with Vince McMahon with from '97 until '99. Yeah. Uh, and then, and, 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 and like I said, it was no, it was uh, the 1999 Survivor Series. That was he, um, like, was chasing Triple H, and he ran outside, and the car showed up and fucking ran him over. But then it says he had a thing with uh, Triple H and the Alliance from '99 until 2001. And then it says his final feuds. And retirement were in 2002 slash 2003. Yeah, see, see, when he got ran, when he got ran over at the Survivor Series, he didn't fucking come back and start wrestling until like October of 2000. When he, he come back looking for the person that ran him over, found out it was fucking Rikishi, and. You, that was basically Stone Cold's return match was fighting uh, Rikishi at uh, No Mercy. Oh, okay. Which it wasn't even a match. It was just pretty much Stone Cold beating the shit out of him for several minutes, throwing him in the back of his pickup truck, taking him out back behind the building. They like, put a prop him up against a, uh, a wall and was going to drive his truck into him. But instead, as he was driving towards him, a cop car ran in front of him. Right. Yeah, he got out while the get while getting out was good. Some of them yeah. would go like Undertaker. He went on and on and on. He's probably in fucking mega pain, dude. Yeah, but you see, the last few several years of Undertaker of, of the Undertaker, you notice he didn't you know really wrestle like a full schedule. Like, he'd only work a couple, you know, times a year. Right. Like, he, like, you remember the last couple of years, he basically, he would basically just come back around with WrestleMania. Right. Wrestle, wrestle at WrestleMania, and then you wouldn't see him or hear from him again, and, so, you know, until oh, next yeah. WrestleMania. Right, right. He did that for a while. True. But, I mean, he, he wrestled for a long time since the 80s. Yeah. You know, he even wrestled Bruiser Brody back in the 80s before he was The Undertaker. Uh. And, uh, yeah, hell of a, hell of a cool-ass dude. You know, but, yeah, a lot of these wrestlers, man, it, to me it's not worth it, you know, living a life being in so much pain. You know, fuck, yeah. fuck that. Yeah, like I, I know everybody says the money's good. Yeah. You know, they make a lot of money. But yeah, but I mean, is it is it really? Is like I say, is it really worth it though? Yeah, is it really worth going through all the fucking pain? You know, and yeah, it's a lot on the body. It's only yeah. I say only do it if it's in your in your blood, man. Yeah, if it's something that you really want to fucking do, and it, you know, then yeah, of course do it. If but it's here's something the thing about me, like you know, growing up, growing up as a kid, you know, I was such a huge wrestling fan that I, I planned on. I was like, man, when I turn when I turn eighteen, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a super, I'm gonna be a WWF or WCW, you know, wrestler, and you know, I thought. Talked about it all for for years, and, and I don't know why. I never. I realized I was like I couldn't do that, you know. Um, when you see what all is going on, hell no, it's it's hard work. Yeah, you know. But you know what? Actually, you, you know what put an end to that dream was basically when I watched uh, Beyond the Mat. Oh yeah. When I, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a life, dude. Like I said, it's it's got to be in your blood, big time. You got to love it beyond to actually, you know. We love wrestling, but I don't want to be a wrestler, you know. Yeah. You know, some people do, but I I don't. If I were to actually be a wrestler, I would have done it in my twenties, and I only would have stayed maybe five years, and that's it. 
I would have done it from like 25 to 30. After that, I would have been like, all right, I'm done. You know, because I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, when I get older, be in so much fucking pain that I can't move. You know, either that or you don't want to be like, be like Ric Flair's age and still have to wrestle just so you can have money to pay your bills with. <laughs> right. That's probably why he drinks a lot is to numb out the fucking pain. You know, because yeah. you know he's he's also another one that's probably in pain every day. I don't even know how to fuck some of these old wrestlers can walk around and act like everything's cool when you know Especially that they're Rick hurting. Blair, dude. You, you yeah. heard about what happened to Ric Flair back in the seventies, don't you? Yeah, he was in a bad plane crash. Yeah, bro, he broke his fucking back. Right. Like Doc, Doc everybody that was in the that documentary. He, he was never going to wrestle again. Right, that was also in the documentary. Yeah, and, and look, and look what he did. He, he he showed the world, everybody like, no, I'm I'm gonna wrestle, and and not only did he come back, come back to wrestling and wrestled again, but he became one of the biggest fucking stars in the wrestling world. Like when you when you go back and you think of like all the great bad guy wrestlers. Like all the great heels from right. the business. Right. To me, there was not there was not a better heel than Ric Flair. What about Roddy Piper? Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You, you look at Ric Flair, late '80s, early '90s, like WCW, WWF, like you know, I mean, like he just like Ric Flair was just made to where like you wanted to beat the fuck out of him <laughs> like he, he would make you he would make you that mad like you just want to like you want to walk up to him and just punch him right in the face <laughs> well that's what you want you want heat when you're a heel yeah but i mean you, you look at it not only that but rick flair you know he also had the you know the four horsemen and all the fucking shit they did, like, always being just a group of thugs and, you know, injuring people or do... Right. I remember uh, they, they did an attack on Lex Luger. Lex Luger was showing up. He had a fucking suit on, limousine. As soon as he got, goes to get out of his limousine, like, the horsemen just jumped him and then, dude, they beat him fucking bloody. Damn. I mean, they, they left, by the time they were done, they left, Luger was laid the fuck out, like, he was laid out, fucking head all bloody, and I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah, it was good times. Yeah. 80s wrestling the was nature boy. Good. Rick Flair, baby. Ric Flair, yeah, he's one of a kind. He's, you know, but you know that motherfucker is waking up every day in some pain. Yeah. You know what? It, like he always says, he, he's a limousine rod, jet blind, kiss dealing, wheeling dealing, <laughs> son of a gun. Damn right he is. <laughs> he's one of a kind. But see, what wrestling's in his blood. Yeah. You know, it has to be to be to go to that level. It it has to be. Yeah. yeah, I mean to keep doing it and like to have that choice, like you could do something else in life, but you just rather choose to go out and just bang your body all up in, the, in a ring night after night. Yeah, you gotta love it, man. Otherwise, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> ain't for everybody. Throw, 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 throw them out the door like. Uh, like they, did, they used to do that one guy in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing his ass out the door like yeah, that was funny. I liked when they did that during that show, yeah. Fresh Prince. It's a good show back in the nineties with Will Smith. Yeah. Oh Will Smith. Yeah. And DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Good old and days. There was the um there was one video I saw. They were um, showing how uh, a couple, of whatever the fuck, uh, video of all the the funny bits of him getting thrown out. 
And at one point, he's actually outside sitting in Will, uh, Will's car, and he says something to him. He's like, oh, that's right, Mr. Phil, or Mr. Banks, uh, you can't throw me out because uh, I'm already outside. <laughs> and, and, and Uncle Phil goes, oh, really? And he fucking just grabs him and, like, throws him over his shoulder and, like, walks off the camera with him. And then, like, you see a shot of the damn, like, kitchen of the house, and you see, instead of Jazz getting thrown out of the house, he actually gets thrown in the house. <laughs> nice. I thought they were going to do it. I thought they were going to show him get, like, thrown in the house, and then show him get thrown back out of the house. But right. they only show him get thrown back in the house. I was like, that would have been funny. That would have been funny. <laughs> yeah. I have to see that. I need to see that. Get thrown in the house, and then a second later, show him get thrown back out the door again. That is fucking great. But, uh, anyways, I think, you know what? I think it's time we should probably wrap up this podcast. We've gone on for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, plus, I, I want to wrap it up before your phone dies <laughs> like it did last time. Uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't worry. I got... I made sure I charged it this time. Yeah, and it's, everybody it's, who's and you know what? I'm it, sure if they, everybody's gonna think that was funny and shit. Well, I, you my know, dying, shit but, happens, man. But that was kind of hey, funny that your phone died. Hey, when, 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 last I, when time. I have a piece of shit fucking phone charger that fucking you keep clicking it in, like trying to stick it into your phone. And it's just like not charging, not charging, not charging, and you're down to three fucking percent. It's like, uh, yeah, dude, you know, we got a fucking problem here. <laughs> hey, that's that's life, man. It's all good, yeah. bro. Hey, you know, no worries. But that was kind of funny. Uh, but I was pretty much done, anyways, uh, uh, with the podcast last time. Uh, so I, you know, it's yeah. all right that your phone died. Shit happens. But that, uh, like that, we we got we got to save uh, we got to save some material for next podcast. Yeah, definitely. Can't fucking just talk about everything tonight, or uh, you know, we just go off of whatever comes to mind. You know, it's, yeah, and that that's just the way we are. It's like you know mm -hmm. what? If if people notice, that's why. Like we'll start talking about wrestling, then we'll move on. Like out of the blue, we'll just start talking about TV shows and. Right. Or then start talking about movies and go back to wrestling. Right. That's or even how we are. Or even video games. Yeah, um, video that's, games. You that's, know, that's what my channel is mean, about, I mean, son. Yeah, I'm saying we don't just you know we won't just sit here and just talk about the same thing. You know. Yeah, we like, try to like you know we're not gonna just sit here and just talk the whole time about wrestling. You know, we'll start. Talking movies, video games, you know, get go back to talking about wrestling, whatever. Right. Whatever comes to mind, you know. That's right. Which is all good, you know. It's all good. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, are you ready to wrap this one up? Sounds good, bro. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you have it, guys. That was uh, another podcast for y'all tonight. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope you all guys enjoyed. We talked about a variety of things, you know, wrestling. And, yeah. You know, I think mostly we touched wrestling. Yeah, tonight. and, you know, some video games and TV shows. Right, and stuff about our past and the 90s filming and all that good stuff. So, oh, yeah. We'll be back to do it again, guys. And uh, that's it for now. And uh, we hope you have a kick-ass night or day or whenever you guys are watching this until next time we out we're out of here peace bye